So. <laughs> it's a okay. lady that said that. <laughs> <laughs> so to kind of get it started, can you just describe to us your position at GMC and kind of what you go through day to day as an employee there? Uh, yeah, so basically I'm a little bit different person. I'm, uh, so I'm in a project position. Um, I work actually in the IT department uh, because I'm classified as an informatics pharmacist. Uh, my job role in a very general sense is uh, basically taking care of the pharmacy application that my pharmacist and uh, pharmacy technicians use. Um, they put in tickets, uh, nurses enter tickets. Uh, I keep the um, medication database up to date. So if they're having any issues, uh, they'll let me know through the ticket system. Um, I take care with my pharmacist background, I take care more of the clinical side of issues, evaluating, making sure uh, dose warnings are firing correctly. Um, that we have uh, appropriate uh, dose buttons and frequencies and everything set up on the medications. Um, evaluate a lot of things to make sure they're clinically accurate. Um, there are other members on my team, uh, but I'm the only pharmacist. Uh, so that's why I kind of steer toward that side more. Um, Haley, you want to go? We'll go Taylor Haley, Taylor, Taylor Haley. Okay. Yeah, no problem. Um, so at your pharmacy, um, where you're at um, and what you do, how do you guys decide what drugs to purchase or stock? Like how do you guys manage your inventory or uh, keep up with your formulary? Uh, for the main hospital, we mm -hmm. that's handled by our P&T committee. Mm -hmm. uh, there are requests coming from uh, which are pharmaceutics and therapeutics. Mm -hmm. uh, um, the um, if there's a request from physicians that there's a new uh, medication out there that, you know, it's the best in the business, that's what we need to use, they'll request it at that committee. We'll go through pricing and making sure, you know, it's worth the price, make sure there's not any appropriate alternatives, that, so, uh, that kind of thing. And if appropriate, mm -hmm. it'll get added to the formulary. Now, SUMC is a little bit of a smaller hospital. So, you know, if a doctor goes to the our pharmacy manager says, hey, I really want, I think I need to use this on this patient. They may order it for him, but it won't necessarily be on formulary. It would just be a one-time kind of thing. Um, in our oncology pharmacy, um, things are a lot uh, uh, simpler there. We basically will get anything uh, that the physicians need to try per new guideline because mm -hmm. guidelines are always changing in oncology. Um, so if there's updated guidelines or something like that, uh, we try to stick to those the most in order keeping medications that follow those guidelines. But mm -hmm. um, if a physician's wanting to be involved in a research study or if they're wanting to uh, try another drug uh, because the other options aren't panning out like what they had hoped, um, we'll, we'll order whatever they need for the most part, as long as it's available. Okay. So um, I actually, where I'm interning at right now, sat in on the P&T committee. Mm -hmm. um, they do it weekly. So the way they do it here is, uh, for example, like we just got remdesivir put back onto the formulary here okay. um, for the COVID patients. And that actually happened really quickly. So they met, they discussed it, took a vote. Within a day or two, we had the answer is where you are. Is that process similar? they kind of meet take a vote and you find out kind of quickly oh uh, so it we, just vary we we only meet once a month mm -hmm. um but if something is needed quickly uh the um committee chair is the pharmacist that's in charge of mm -hmm. uh that sits on the committee uh he'll go around and get uh answers from all the people that need to be and you know move it through that uh, process that way again we're a smaller hospital mm -hmm. so you know we can you know, go have a little face to face instead of having to set up a meeting for just mm -hmm. one drug. So um, that's how we handle it. Um, but uh, it probably varies from hospital to hospital. But same idea is that, mm -hmm. you know, if you got something urgent, usually there's always a process to put something through urgently if you're not meeting on a weekly basis. Okay. Uh, one quick little last part of my question. Um, what you said with the cancer treatments, it's kind of like if the physician needs it or depending on the guidelines since they 
change all the time. You guys will normally get in whatever they need. Um, if it's something newer or something that maybe the nurses on the care team aren't familiar with, how do the physicians go about training or sh like showing the nurses how to how to utilize that drug for you know that type of cancer? Uh, I, I would from again, I don't know as much about what mm -hmm. goes on down there from on a day to day basis. Um, but I know my pharmacists actually have a lot of involvement with the nurses mm -hmm. down there. So uh, even to the point of going to the um, uh, being at the patient's side, whenever mm -hmm. the nurse is administering drug, making sure things are going correctly. Um, I mean, we have four pharmacists that work in that area and I think they take uh, rotations of being down there two at a time. Um, so there's always an extra hand that mm -hmm. can step away for a few minutes um and uh i know my pharmacists stay up on they're they're constantly reading things uh their mm. main like one of their main sources right now is up to date which is a mm. source I'm, you're probably familiar with um and so they're constantly staying up on all the information there if it's not there they'll go out and find research studies they have access to a bunch of stuff down there um again i don't know the detail the little gritty details of that yeah but. that's the process that I was kind of thinking that's how it usually goes, but I was just curious because yeah. some places do things a little bit differently. All right. Um, I think Taylor will ask you the next question now. Yeah, this one's pretty simple. Um, just based on what you currently do, do you ever get to interact with um, any of the doctors there or nurses, like you mentioned, who would be administering the medications? Um, not Typically, most of the time, the only interactions I'm dealing with is if they have a uh, issue that I'm trying to help them with. Uh, on occasion, I'll call and speak with a nurse or a physician um, to help them troubleshoot and work through their issues. Um, but most of the time, I'm not directly involved. I, I do sit on a couple of committees. Um, for us, we have a um, medical records committee and a uh, physician's advisory committee that are kind of like go hand in hand. I think the PAC is a subcommittee of MRC, um, but they um, that's where we make a lot of decisions on how to improve things in Epic, and that's more physician directed. As far as like with nursing, there's uh, some committees that nursing have as well um, for making changes in the system and that I attend as needed. Um, but otherwise I don't really have a lot of direct involvement. It's all kind of like in the background kind of stuff. And I rarely go to the floor um, only in, cause of, I mean, there's a lot of applications nowadays that, you know, I can remote into a computer or I can, you know, we can, touch base via phone or something else and um it's not necessary necessary uh to have a face-to-face -face conversation anymore as much as it used to be oh when you guys buy drugs um is there like a single place that you go to to get them do you put them out on bid um how, how does that go we have contracts with uh the the wholesaler that we use is mckesson uh, there are several uh, wholesalers out there, uh, Cardinal Health, um, Mayor Sorsbergen, those are two others that I'm familiar with. Um, they, they're their primary uh, groups that we go through for ordering medications. Um, if we can't find it on their um, database, if it's not in stock with them, uh, we'll call, there's, I, I'm less certain of this, but I know we'll call uh, some of the manufacturers direct sometimes, or we have secondary contracts or used to. I'm not sure if we still do. I know like uh, used to when we had Amerisource Bergen was our primary contract. Um, we might would uh, reach out to Cardinal Health uh, for cases when something was on back order with Amerisource. Um, so we primarily go through the vendor we have on contract because um, we get contracted prices and you know negotiated prices at that point um if you go through someone else it's you're at their you know 
whatever they decide that the price is at this time that's it you know it's not you're not bound by a contract at that point to help with the pricing and stuff when, when you do, you just talk about redemptivere since that's new do you deal directly with the company or is that coming through a distribution place? so remdesivir initially i don't now it may be coming through mckesson i'm I probably could look at that real quick, but the, uh, when it first came out, so. okay. So that's it, who we get it from. Yeah. Okay. So, well, um, at first we were getting it from government, um, mm -hmm. supplied, um, and same thing with the, uh, monoclonal antibodies that are COVID treatments, uh, the bemlanivimab, which I think is no longer as popular because of some of the variants that are out right now. And the, uh, other product, uh, Casaviramab Kes and Indevimab, uh, combination product. Um, those are being supplied by uh, Department of Health, I think, or some a government organization. So we're not having to purchase those at the moment. Uh, but that's a special that this is a special case. We that's not typical. Uh, it's the first time I've seen it. Uh, government handing out the medications, lot same way they're handing out the vaccines. Um, we're not having to purchase those. Um, so all of that, um, we're, we're good on those, but, uh, once those drugs probably get fully approved, uh, we'd probably have to start purchasing them though. Taylor or Haley, you guys? Okay. Um, so it, you were mentioning about if, they, the providers need certain medications in regards to chemotherapy. Normally, you guys will go ahead and try and get those in. And what if it's like the newer ones, like how we mentioned remdesivir, and uh, these manufacturers may not have it yet, or they have trouble locating it. Do you, are you familiar with the process that they would go about how to find it? Or like some of these drugs are really expensive too. So like in relation to the patient, do they, like, how, how do they go about that process? Um, that I'm not as familiar with it, uh, okay. but I know most of your manufacturers have representatives that you can speak with, you can reach mm -hmm. out to and speak with. And uh, the big ones, we have like a sales rep in our area, in our district that comes and does, um, like they'll do luncheons and different things. Mm -hmm. um, we have their contact information. So if it's a drug that their company handles, we'll reach out to them personally and see how we can go about getting it. And if there's some kind of supply limitation at even at their level, then uh, we just have to let the doctor know mm -hmm. that we, we're not able to get it. Um, what, what percent of chemotherapy um, takes place, if to your knowledge, like inside the hospital and in the inpatient setting or versus like an outpatient setting? It's much more limited. It does happen because uh, obviously your um, cancer patients are going to be in and out of the hospital a lot more. Um, mm -hmm. I, I don't know to what extent of our, I would say, this is a very generic guess, but I, I would say less than 20% of our, or probably less than 10% of our hospital patient population is ever chemo patients um I, I do know reimbursement for chemo therapies during hospital inpatient visits is very limited uh we try to not when okay i'm going to say avoid it but not i mean we're going to get the patient their therapy if mm -hmm. they need it uh but a lot of times when they're in the hospital therapies have to be paused um, anyway, because of whatever they're tr having to deal with, they got an infection, they're not going to be giving them uh, chemotherapy mm -hmm. drugs that are going to wipe their immune system, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of times the chemo gets paused anyway, so it's not a huge factor. But uh, we do have a, I, I do have a method set up for my oncology pharmacist to monitor if their patients uh, that they're seeing down there in the cancer center are being admitted and are in a room. So they have a way of looking that up. Um, and if they need 
to treat them inpatient, they do provide that. We do have a floor dedicated for that. Nurses, uh, we have to have specialized nurses who um, mm -hmm. ha are uh, certified in administering those drugs on the floor mm -hmm. for that purpose. Um, now, are there often situations where you guys will um, transfer patients to somewhere else? In oh, yeah. certain situations in regards to cancer or chemotherapy? Um, it depends on how severe it is. I mean, if we can treat them, we will. Um, mm -hmm. If there's something very complicated going on or if they need to be part of a uh, bigger research hospital, mm -hmm. um, we'll, um, I think Shands is our primary go-to uh, um, down in Gainesville. And um, I was trying to think if there, there's maybe a couple other places we might send them to. I'm not sure, but um but that's typical across the board too. Mm -hmm. I mean, if, if there's somebody we can't fully support here, we will transfer them out. Okay. Yeah. I asked that because, um, this hospital I'm at now, like they don't, they don't do dialysis and they don't have, mm -hmm. you know, they don't have the resources to be able to do that. So if there's ever a situation that a patient needs like renal replacement therapy, we have to transfer them out of here. So I didn't know if there were anything specific to, the cancer um, treatment that would require them to be sent out, but that makes sense. Yeah, I, I wouldn't say there's, we offer most services mm -hmm. um, and we offer most therapies. It's, we're not a, um, we might not have everything in stock right away. Mm -hmm. um, so that would be the only issue, but can, chemo, cancer related therapies aren't er, typically like something that you have to have all right, I need this right, need to get this started right now. Like you mm -hmm. can't, the way it can't wait a day for you to get it kind of thing. Um, some antibiotics, you know, if you got an infection, you can't wait 24 hours because that infection can get much worse. So if you mm -hmm. haven't got something, you might have to um, ship them out, you know, or if they're in critical shape. But with uh, chemo treatment and cancer treatment, most of the time, never say always, most of the time it's stuff that we can handle ourselves. So you guys um, we, do like radiation there? Yes. Yep. Okay. We have radiation. We have, chemo, we do chemo. We do, uh, we have hyperbarics. I was trying to think what all is down there. There's several um, services they offer down there. Awesome. Thank you. Kyle, a quick question. Do you deal much with the Braxame? The cancer yeah. drug? Uh, yeah, we do have, we do carry that. And uh, can, can you give a, I mean, just maybe a, like a generic, this is a little background on how we use it, when we use it type of thing. That I can't, <laughs> that's where I don't use it. And like, I, I've, I've set it up in the system Yeah. and um, I, off the top of my head, I don't even remember how it like dosing or anything. I um, don't know if I get like one physician always uses it for, you know, uh, you know, kidney cancer or something like that. No. Okay. No, All right. no, I don't, ha I don't have a clue with the, like, the drug specific stuff. I don't you know. I, I could, you throw a drug out there at me and I, I don't even know what they're used for half the time down there anymore that okay. was something I knew 10 years ago and it, I don't use it so yeah right now I yeah, mean well, that's where I, I always look up any information I need when I'm building my drugs out but yeah. um, that's about the limits of it so my question is um, in the current formulary do you see any inhalation drugs or anything like that um, is used for treatment of lung cancer or even just lung disorders in general? Uh, we have a lot of respiratory drugs. Um, I was trying to think if uh, I know they've nothing chemo specific that I'm aware of though that would be probably a little bit more of a uh, specialty practice that they would want to do more in a research hospital. Um, so things that are not comp, so your, your common administration is going to be, you know, IV um, or sub-Q injections. Um, anything that is not typical of that, we, I would say uh, to Haley's question earlier about sending people out, that might be the kind of stuff that we would send someone out for. Uh, something that our nurses are not trained in, our physicians and pharmacists aren't really trained in. Um, the physicians might be aware of it through uh, some research studies they read about and like, hey, this might be something we need to try. If it is, then we're going to send them to somewhere that does it. Um, 
because it's not going to be something that we would practice enough to be training people on. That's a very specialized administration. Now, are you, I know you mentioned the P&T committee. Um, I'm assuming you probably don't sit in on those meetings. Um, well, if you, sorry, I'm trying to find what I wrote down to ask you. Um, to your knowledge, when they are looking at these things, I know obviously they're, they're doing like group decisions, they're looking at pricing, you know, if they're able to get it in. Do you know if like commonly do they look at certain specific matters related to the drug itself, like pharma, like it's pharmacokinetics, um, administration, you know, it's stability, how, it, how it's administered or um, like safety issues? Like what, what do you think they specifically are looking at or discussing? in those meetings if you know um or if you've heard of yeah again i, I don't sit on them but primarily mm -hmm. they're looking at um you're looking at a cost the benefit kind of ratio mm -hmm. kind of deal and versus alternatives that are on the uh that are available um if this drug is coming in like you got to order a bunch of it because mm -hmm. you got to administer it every six hours or something very frequently, or it requires a, a lot of um, dose manipulation. It's very unstable. We, if it's difficult to deal with, yeah, that's going to be a factor in whether or not you can carry mm -hmm. it. I mean, um, uh, because of cost factor, but it all goes back to mm -hmm. cost, you know, if um, now if the benefits of it, outweigh all those negatives that yeah you know we'll look at it and um probably look at getting it um so if something new is approved or added to the formulary or just ordered even maybe for a certain amount of time um do you know if who, who like does pnt relate that information to the doctors and nurses pharmacists do they go in and train and say this is what we're going to do now this is how we're going to do it um, or is it someone else who does that? No, yeah, they, they do. So the, again, the, the pharmacist who sits on that uh, mm -hmm. committee is our uh, clinical manager, mm -hmm. um, clinical pharmacy manager. And uh, he will relay that information to the pharmacist as he needs to. Uh, they also get that information out to the physicians. I'm not sure the method of communication if they just put a notice out like an email or if it's like a notice on the um like a you you muted yeah you lost your sound we can't hear you kyle you muted I think it's headset mode on, maybe, or turned off. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. I guess my headset decided to turn itself off. Okay, yeah. nice. Yeah, so like an example with, um, with in relation to my question, the PNT committee here just changed over to using vancomycin AUC dosing, um, and they were mm -hmm. looking at how that could be more efficacious, and they were going through the guidelines and the meeting of okay is this how we should do this what are our goals like concentrations you know all the specifics and then once it was decided on they sent out to all the pharmacists i'm not sure about the doctors i don't really interact directly with them but mm -hmm. all the pharmacists got these um these emails with tests and quizzes mm -hmm. that they had to complete to make sure that they understood the new protocols and how to utilize them and the resources for you know how to access that if needed so i would imagine that there it's kind of done in this in the same way yeah if, if there's if there's a big change like that uh they you see dosing kind of stuff that they're not familiar with you're completely changing their normal mm -hmm. routine of how they do things uh yeah there's going to be like you said uh training period and um probably in that very instance there's less communication to like the providers are aware of it but there's less like mass communication because it doesn't directly affect them. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, because it's pharmacists who verify the orders. Yep, yep. 
So it's the, the when pharmacy is managing that therapy, then the physicians are saying, I'm stepping back and letting you handle it. So they don't, they don't care how you do it mm-hmm. as long as you get it done. <laughs> but Kyle, uh, an, an odd question, no, not odd, but lung cancer has the highest number of fatalities of any cancer, mm-hmm. right? Now there's some cancers where there's more cases of cancer, but it has the highest number of fatalities. Um, how did the, is there anything that comes in to play at the hospital when, when you deal with that? I mean, is there anything unusual about lung cancer? Um, I mean, obviously a lot of people, I don't know if the word to track is the right way, but the cause of it is, you know, cigarettes, tobacco products. Um, is there anything in a hospital setting where lung cancer sets itself apart uh, from, the, from the other types of cancer, whether it's buying drugs, treatments, things of that nature? Not to my knowledge. Uh, in the hospital setting, it's more or less like whatever patients you get. I mean, there's nothing specialized about it over, you know, breast cancer, kidney cancer, or whatever, you know, you're going to treat it. Um, for us, at least, you know, we... Um, not... Typically, I don't think our respiratory therapists um, are certified to deal with oncology drugs. So you have to have a little bit uh, special, you have to have certification even with the nursing side. Um, So there's, to my knowledge, there's nothing specialized unless like y'all were talking about earlier, having to do inhalation treatments with chemo. That would take a specialized administration handling procedures because you've got the chemo in the air um especially if it's hazardous uh mm-hmm. there's there's a lot to consider there you have to have very specialized equipment to keep it contained um i was curious just because I, it it would make sense for them i guess not to be but also possibly to be even part of the care team just to help monitor the you know the patient's lung function I, I could but see I that. I imagine a doctor can can also do that. So I just didn't know how multidisciplinary it gets. At your, at to- your research institutions, it's becoming more of that kind of multiple disciplinary team. Mm-hmm. Um, I would not be surprised if you saw a respiratory therapist on a team like that, but they'd have to be special certified. They'd mm-hmm. have to be, it, it's a very rare field. Yeah, there'd um, be few. Yeah. Um, I don't even know if there's what kind of certifications there would be for them specifically, you know, um, like I'm saying, nursing has to have their special certification for it. Mm-hmm. Um, pharmacists don't really, but it helps if you have the residencies and stuff mm-hmm. under your belt. Um, and, um, providers have to have special residency and fellowships and stuff for oncology. So, uh, I would, I mean, if a respiratory therapist or some other, or some other uh, discipline uh, came into the picture of the care team that it had to be specialized um, and I just don't know enough about those other mm-hmm. areas to know who's available for that kind of stuff but I could easily see that at a research hospital um, because that is the uh, new approach to things is that multiple uh, disciplinary approach. Mm-hmm. All right, Kyle. Well, we really appreciate your time. We know you probably got a lot of work to do today, so we don't want to bog you down with too many questions. So, and uh, you are our first victim. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. So, how's Thank everything you. else going over there? You you look like you're home. I am. I'm working from home. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> that's the uh, that's the advantage of this uh, uh, project based. Uh, um, job uh there's the hours are a little bit more uh less standard like I, i'm typically monday uh eight to five um okay nice to meet you Haley. nice to meet you good good luck with everything <laughs> finishing out your year um uh but uh but yeah it's uh it's been nice being able to work from home uh, i can be a little bit more flexible with my hours now i'm on call if something happens, that's the the downside to um, being in a project position that's kind of a support 
staff kind of thing. Uh, if pharmacy needs me in the evening, they got my number, they'll call me, you know, middle of the night, which is rare. They, they don't, unless they just absolutely have to, but uh, I'm, I'm there if they need me. So I have to be available at any time. Are you, are you living in Valdosta now? I am. I am. Okay. I'm actually uh, like five minutes from the hospital. All right. So, so, so you didn't have any major commute there? Nope. I've, nope cousins that live in big cities and their commutes were like 90 minutes each way Oof. and so when I got to stay home it was a godsend oh yeah so. <laughs> yeah at, at that point you're like whenever they start trying to make you come back you're just like uh-uh no <laughs> 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 like yeah it worked fine for a year it can keep working <laughs> yeah so all righty well thank you very much we really appreciate it so all right, all right. well thank yes, you thank you and nice to meet you and nice to meet you too Good luck. Good luck with you too. You you got the school finish. My, my my I'm done with school, so <laughs> yeah, right. Tell, tell your sister I said hi. Okay, yeah, we'll do. All righty. All right. All righty. Over and out. We'll see you later. Yeah, have a great one. Bye bye. Okay.